have been doing and, uh, and me as well and the team. Um, so I'm just, I'll just introduce myself. As um, Andrew said, I'm a software engineer. Um, I've recently come to the world of ticket hacking about a year ago. So I've been working for quite a long time in the corporate world in quite closed environments with quality, QA, all of this kind of thing. I was kind of interested in exploring open data, ticket hacking, and um, different ways of connecting with the community and trying to bring my skills to um, the community to try and make a difference. Um, I'm also a commuter now, so I commute for about, I spend about two hours a day on sector transit, so, um, and I see a lot of things as I'm commuting. Um, and that, some of that's been brought into this project. Um, I represent the Unlock Philly team, so I'm just one of the team members. I, I was the uh, person who started this project at a hackathon, and over the, the past year it's grown and developed um, through the involvement of various people from various fields. Um, so, what ticket hacking? I don't really need to describe this because we just had a great uh, presentation about it, but um, as Lauren said, it's kind of a lot of people, it's a bit scary hacking, you know, it, it's not about this. Um, it's more about open data, bringing together different um, people from the community with various skill sets. And that's the important thing to, to say, it's not all about bringing developers out. It's, you need a really good mix of, of people to contribute to these projects to really make a difference. Um, cheap hardware, open source tools, all of these things have made it really easy for people to just pick up and run with things and develop uh, develop tools that are really useful to people. And the main currency is obviously pizza, so there's not really no low carb diet involved in this at all. So it's um, yeah, I've eaten a lot of pizza over the last year. Um, and here's a very familiar looking visualization. So I think we've already seen this once. Um, so the here's the outcome from the from ticket hacking. So. This is a really exciting project that's been working with schools, um, collecting data using Azure and Waze, uh, a touch of Philly, and then the schools project, which I think Lauren mentioned as well. Um, so what we decided to focus on is accessibility. So um, I attended a weekend hackathon, which was called um, Apps for Transit in Philadelphia, and there were people from sector there and various groups. And um, so, yeah. What the main aim is to focus on, though, is the accessibility. So I'm just going to describe the accessibility problem first and jump ahead of it. Um, so I just wanted to highlight the actual accessibility problems that many people face uh, in Philadelphia. So this is um, a cafe. Um, nice renovations, brand new. Um, but you can see there's no ramp at the front. Um, the seating, this is the only seating available at the lower level that could be accessible, six feet and then you've got co uh, this, this height, and then the restroom's down these stairs here. Um, here's another example. This is, this is somewhere that says it's accessible, but you can see you can get to buy your coffee, but you can't really get anywhere else without going around the back to the accessible entrance, which looks like that. Um, and then you can see here, this is an example of some construction that's really inconsiderate. Um, there's been some provision made to put a ramp in here, but you can see it's all blocked by other construction. There's a tree blocking the way here. And then you've got really thoughtful and accessible locations as well. So, um, but they're often pretty difficult to find. And then there are things that break as well. So here's an elevator that's broken. Um, this obviously has a huge impact for people. This shows you 30th Street Station and the impact of this station being having an ele elevator exit, um, which actually happened for about a month earlier this year. Uh, and you can see that to get back into the network, to get to the Amtrak station, you've either got to go all the way down to 40th Street station, find a bus, get all the way back, or you can go all the way over to 13th. This is actually slightly out of date now because 15th Street, well, with all the new renovation that's happened there, there's an elevator at that location as well. Um, and just to highlight something nearby as well, I, I, we spent um, just a morning going down Third Nerd Street. Um, Third Street is now called Nerd Street. It's been rebranded. And what we did, we looked at four blocks to see, just did a, a survey of the, the front door to see whether it was accessible. And this shows, and then we just put it on Mapbox, just quick, a quick um, lo-fi kind of prototype. And 
this shows the in, you know, just how big this problem is. So out of nine, sorry, 72 storefronts, only nine of them were wheelchair accessible on that section of Mayor Street. So obviously this means a lot of people are being locked out from jobs, places, education, um, and experiences. So what can we do about it? So this is where I come back to the hackathon. So this was the idea, bringing together data from various sources um, and visualizing it together. Um, and this was the early prototype. So you can see this was one weekend earlier this year. And there were eight elevator outages all at the same time. The whole of Center City was in inaccessible. And I'm, I, I took an interest in 8th Street because that's one of the main stations with three lines going through it. And I noticed that was out. Um, and I, I went down and I saw this. So this was, there's no information down there. There's just, there was just this. And it was actually like this for two months. So I started tweeting about it. And then um, NBC News picked this up. And then um, they, uh, they asked me about the project and everything. And then the next day, someone came and cleaned it and fixed it. So you know, this is an example of how things work. Things are actually a lot better at the moment. I've noticed that the, there's, mo there's far fewer outages at the moment for elevators. Um, but it shows the impact that some of these civic, um, you know, just right from the beginning they can have. Um, so the app's developed quite a lot since then. So um, what we've started doing now is, is mapping accessible venues around um, stations that are accessible as well. So you can see here on the map, it shows an outage. Um, when you click on the stations, you can see what's around them. And it uses data from Yelp, um, which has a wheelchair accessible flag on the API. Um, the other thing that we've started doing is um, keeping track of how long the outage is for, has, has been for. So we, we keep track of that by um, recording the start time of the notification that comes from Sector. Um, so you can see here this 15 hours ago, it says there. Um, some of the feedback we've had from users. So th this is when the user feedback started. So um, you know, I've made an effort to try and involve more people from the beginning. And um, people have contacted me as well through the website. Um, the feedback early on from the Yelp information was that it just wasn't reliable enough. Um, and I'm going to come on to that later in the talk. Um, so late, a, a few months later, this was in May, we had a great opportunity because there was a, a hackathon um, called Hack for Access that was set up. Um, and it was a great opportunity to um, bring together members of the community and start really finding out how useful what we were doing was and involve more people in the project. Um, and we had some great input um, and also advice on you know, be best ways to uh, talk about the issues and the people and um, some of the things that came out of this which were really cool. Um, there's a few shout outs here. This was Chris, our founder at Total Philly helped with this. So we did a D3 visualization of the elevator outage history that we're capturing to make it really easy for groups to actually go back and say, well, look at this, this is the problem. This is how long this um, station has been out for. So you can see here um, the number of days when 30th Street was out and then it kept recurring, this problem. Um, and the other thing we worked on, um, this was Jim Smiley and working with Girl Develop IT on this particular part of the site, was looking at Google, Google trip planning and then layering on top of that some of the information we had about from Sector about the um, accessibility at stations. So here you can see there's a route from right from where we are, Arch, Arch Street Meeting House, to uh, Market Street. And you can see that this particular station is blocked um, because it's not actually wheelchair accessible. So we haven't got to, it's a pretty complex problem, obviously, solving the whole um, route planning, taking this into account. And Google um, doesn't allow that filter, so this is a way to kind of highlight that, that problem. Um, the other thing we've been doing, um, Dave Walk um, and the team was helping us um, gather information about accommodation um, and apartments that are wheelchair friendly so that we can look at, okay, this is an accessible apartment and what's, around, what's accessible around it, what kind of area is it? Um, so the question, you know, we have to be critical about this, but what, the question we kind of asked ourselves is how good is this data that we're visualizing? I mentioned about Yelp and how the quality isn't really good. 
And also, the other thing that's really important is how accessible are we? How accessible is our website to people? Um, so first of all, this is a common frustration for a lot of people. Um, Yelp says they're accessible. You have to call up, you have to find out, are you really accessible? And then you, you find out, okay, there are actually two steps at the front and the restaurants don't have to go. Um, the disadvantage with Yelp is that there's one binary field, so it's not really very useful to a lot of people. It's just is, is it or isn't it, which doesn't cover um, you know, the range of, uh, of disabilities and accessibility needs that people have. And also the flag's controlled by the business. It's not, you know, we think of Yelp as being a review site, but in this case, it's actually the business that says we're accessible or not. Um, and also the coverage is, is poor because it's not just businesses that people are interested in. There's many different kinds of places that you want to be able to determine whether they're accessible or not. Um, so here's, this is just recapping some of that. So some of the categories that uh, we need are, um, we need to talk about the entrance, signs, the noise level is useful, seating, and th there are a lot more, there are a lot of other items and criteria that's needed. And you know, we, we've obviously worked out that we need to try and find some way to um, survey this data ourselves to get, you know, encourage people to go out, use some kind of app to crowdsource this information or also organize map -athons. And we've been working with a group uh, called Link and uh, Liberty Resources and trying to gather people together to um, learn more about this and also contribute to the project. Um, so the, the first thing we did, we thought, okay, what's already out there? Because we don't want to start building a crowdsourcing app when we can reuse something that's already open source. So we looked at the two main apps that we, could, that we found. One of them is called Wheelmap. The other one's called Access Map. Um, neither of them really met our needs. Um, the biggest problem was that neither of them were accessible to screen readers at all, um, to people, visually impaired people and blind people. Um, one of them had very limited data categories. The, the positive thing, it was using o OSM and it was database. Um, the localization was poor on that one. It's a German website, but it kept switching back to German all the time, which um, was a problem for, for the team. So. And then the Access Map app, the problem with this one was that they, they're building on top of um, Google Maps, but everything, all the data is, is closed. So we want to be able to have an open API that we can use and visualize and look at the data ourselves. So we start building our own app. Um, we're involving the community in the process. We're still at an early stage. Um, Austin Serafin is a, a local um, consultant here who specializes in accessibility websites and he's reviewing everything we're doing um, and the aim is to use this next year to collect data um, using mapathons. We, we had a trial a week ago, this is um, one of our, my buddy and team member uh, Clark here and Faith and Atta and we've been presenting to a team of 40 people um, trying to get people to use our app and go out and collect data just as a trial. Um, now here's the app, so it's completely accessible. Um, we've been keeping things simple. Um, we're using Foursquare API to get the actual points of interest so you can get your loca whatever's near, near you. Um, we've thought through carefully and involved a lot of people in the questions that we're asking. So we'll be asking you know, here about the, the entrance, um, the main door, whether the interior is easy to navigate, restrooms, um, and then the noise level, all of the things that I've kind of talked about already. And um, here's the results from this trial. So af just after one week, we got some really awesome user feedback and um, a lot of enthusiasm from, from people as well um, that was focusing on this and trying to gain more insight and knowledge into the accessibility and um, giving people a way to find out where they can go to go out and explore, and also highlight places that aren't so accessible uh, and areas so that we can you know, educate and talk to people and provide advice on ways to actually change things in, a, in an inexpensive way that can make a big difference. Um, and using the data that we've collected, we're hoping to um, next year carry out mapathons and get much more coverage. Um, so I, I just wanted to go through some of the things that we've been learning. So 
Um, the important thing when building an accessible app is, is socializing the goal at the beginning, making sure that whoever's contributing, you know, we're using GitHub and we've got lots of contributors, and it's important that the developers know um, where, you know, what our objectives are and how they can find out more about accessibility and how to make a website or an app accessible to screen readers. Um, the other thing is when developing, keeping the voice over speakers turned on and testing things. Um, obviously, you know, we talk a lot about visualizations, but to people um, who are visually impaired or blind, um, we need to give more text information alongside any of the visualizations that we're doing. Um, adding labels, giving alt tags, um, and, and obviously involving users to get actual feedback from people um, to ensure that we can tune the app. And here's just a screenshot of the accessibility features. So we've all got access to these things, but um, we don't. Often, most of us wouldn't ever think to turn them on and try them out. Um, so yeah, that, that's everything. So as I said, everyone can contribute to this and be more than happy to talk more about the project. If you'd like to get involved and help us, um, I'm at unlock, uh, it's at unlockfully.com and I'm a member of the Code for Fully group as well. Um, so yeah, that's everything. Thank you. a business that's inaccessible, how responsive are they to the um, help for those? So what, what I found, I mean, I've, I've, I was new to this, completely new to this. You know, I, I, um, re I obviously saw some of the problems, but it's only recently that I've been doing this. I go, I'll go into business and say, okay, you said you were also accessible, but you've got two steps at the end. Um, and it, it's often quite a defensive response. Um, well, we, you know, or the, the responses usually are, well, it's an old building, or you know, we, we, there's, there's, there are lots of reasons why people think they don't have to make themselves accessible. But it's and, and also it's this kind of surprise. Or people will say, well, no one's ever asked that before. Um, so you know, I, I think there's a big need for mo a more visibility across the community into these problems. I, I, I worked for, you know, my previous employer when I was in London, um, one of the senior managers um, there was blind, and everything that we developed had to be, he had to be able to review it. So it meant that the clients, the, the customers of our web platform also got an accessible website. Um, and it's the same with any, you know, an architecture firm. If, if there's a barrier,